All right, man. So y'all boys here because y'all want to learn how to make thumbnails like this one and this one. Well, I'm finna teach you. So the first thing you're gonna need is Photoshop. But I'm not gonna lie, if you don't got Photoshop, there's things like Photopea and Pixlr that's available for free. So if you, wanna, you can use those. So you're gonna wanna create a new document. It has to be 1280 by 720. That is the size for your thumbnails on YouTube. 1280 by 720. Now that you have that, what I usually do, it's my basic setup. I just put it on 150 because for some reason, bro, my Photoshop be acting weird. It doesn't go on a full screen. Like, look at this. It don't do it, bro. I don't know. So, after that, what you're going to want to do is go to Google. I go to Pinterest, right? I'm going to show you why. The baddies. Pinterest has all the baddies, right? So, what you're going to do, you're literally going to go on Pinterest and type in baddie. That's what I do. Now, when you type this in, every form, shape, every size of baddie is going to pop up. So you're just going to go through the list and you're going to pick one that looks appealing to the eye and one that's going to bring in your clickbait. So feel me? I'm going to just go through this list and pick. All right. So as I'm scrolling through this list, bro, I see Kaya. And that's crazy because somebody from the Cozy Discord literally asked me to make this. So feel me? Go sub up Kwan, go join the Cozy Discord and go sub up Kaya. All right, so after you got your clickbait for the thumbnail, you're gonna wanna get a picture of yourself and drag that into Photoshop, right? But first is what I like to do. I usually like to set the background beforehand. I'm not saying it's important, it's just something I like to do. Now that that's done, what you're gonna do is grab the picture of yourself that you want for the thumbnail, and you're gonna add it to Photoshop. For me, mine is usually screenshots from the videos I record, because I don't know why this angle is like, it's usually good for these type of thumbnails. But next up, you're gonna go over here to this little corner and you're gonna click the um the little icon. You're gonna click that two times and it's gonna open up a new tab in Photoshop basically. And this new tab, you're gonna crop the picture, okay? So you wanna crop the picture so that the black lines on the side are not there. We need those gone. Listen, I already told y'all boys, my Photoshop be acting weird sometimes, so it was fake giving me a hard time, but we finally cropped the picture. So we cropped the picture, and now what you're going to want to do is press Control c right? You're going to press Control c then X this out. You don't have to save it. It doesn't matter. Now, when you go back to this, you're going to delete that, and you're going to press Control v And you're going to press V again, and now you're going to scale this so that it fits the frame. But now you're actually ready to begin. So... I'm over here just trying to envision what I'm going to do, but I finally got it. So you're going to go over here, scroll down, and press select subject. My Photoshop be acting weird, like I said, so sometimes it doesn't just automatically cut out the person. So what I'll have to do is press W, select the quick selection tool, go to the plus so that, feel me, it captures the stuff, and I just pick up what it missed out on. So feel me, this is me doing that right here, and I'm going to get with y'all boys when I finish. All right, so that looks pretty good. So what you're gonna do now is press Control J, and basically it just takes, an, like, fill me that selection. It just takes it and copies it. Um, as you can see, it's like little things in the background. So what I did is I basically erased it. You can use the eraser tool and just let me erase that in the background. So after you erase that, you're going to want to press control on both the layers so that it selects both of them together and just move them a little bit to the right. That's what I do because for me, with the type of videos I make, I like to split the screen half and half. Next, what you're going to want to do is go over here to filters, camera roll filter, and this is where the magic actually begins. You're going to want to go to detail, sharpen, and turn it all the way up. Not all the way, but like at high enough. And then over here, you're going to do the same thing with noise reduction. Now, I know y'all boys see the difference. You see how smooth it looks now? Like, feel me? Um, you could copy my settings, or you can just try and play around with it and find your own. But look at the difference. You, you see the difference. Now, the next thing you're going to do is go to the background layer, and you're going to go to filters, blur, and put Gaussian blur. Listen. You might be like, why am I blurring the background? It just gives you the, it just gives it a good look. I usually put it on like 1.7 to 2.6. For this, 2.6 was good. It doesn't look too blurry in the background. You can still see the background, so that's good. Um, really, it just gives that focus effect. So the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna go to shapes, 
and you're gonna make sure that the fill and stroke hey, yo, what the? pulse and you're just gonna make a line straight down the middle this line is basically gonna be the divider for the images so boom once you do that you're gonna want to go over here put it in the middle let me make sure it's centered boom now you're gonna want to go to blending options and this is where you start adding your effects and stuff so for this i'm gonna go with the outer glow and i'm gonna change the color of the outer glow so like it gives off a glow effect um over here i'm just playing with the settings you could copy mine if you want you can figure out your own if you want film whatever is best for you Okay, so now that you finish this, the next thing you're going to do is go to the background and go to camera roll filter. When you do this, you're going to press auto and it's going to give a better effect, a better focus effect. I forgot to tell you that. Alright, so now that you've done that, you're going to want to get your picture and you're going to scale it to size. So, I mean, just make sure it covers it side up all the way. That's all you're going to do. So now that you're done with that, you're gonna go over here to layer style click the layer and press select subject right it's gonna do the same thing again and now you see we have to figure this out by ourselves because i told you photoshop is moving weird so we're gonna go over here and basically select everything that we want to be isolated all right and this is gonna basically make a copy of everything we selected as you can see we cut it out it's not the best cut out in the world but it'll work so here we're gonna go and we're gonna go to filters camera roll filter once again and we're gonna do the same thing we did with the first image the only difference is i pressed auto this time because i wanted to see if the lighting would be better so here i am playing with the sharpening and noise reduction settings once again boom that actually looks better i'm not gonna lie so auto did justice here we're gonna go and we're gonna blur the background once again so filter cause and blur and play with the settings of that again and boom y'all see that we like picasso over here i'm not gonna lie now we just gotta add details so the first thing you're gonna want to do is give yourself that glow effect like how the rectangle has so i'm gonna go to blending options outer glow and i'm basically just gonna play around with the settings you can follow along or once again you can create your own all right so that looks good so i decided to go here and add a drop shadow effect so that you can have both colors um this also gives it a glow effect but like it highlights the other glow effect like an ambience effect if you know what I mean. So here's that, and this is how it looks. Now what you're going to do is copy the layer style and paste it on the other picture so that it makes it easier and you won't have to do all this again. All you're gonna, all you're gonna really have to do is just change the colors as you see fit. So feel me, now that that's done, this is almost done. It's looking good. Looking, looking quality thumbnail right here, clickbait thumbnail. Now we just gotta add some emojis and some text. All right, yeah, so the one thing I do different with the emojis is I add a Gaussian blur and a motion blur because it just makes it look better that way. So that's what I'm doing right now. And for the rest, you basically could just follow along and repeat until we get to the text. Now here's the important part. The important part is the text. For the text, you're gonna wanna use this font, Burbank Big Ascended. I think that's what it's called. I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm gonna leave a download link in the description so you can go download it. But 
we're gonna go with a little simple text 10 out of 10 nothing crazy and now we're gonna play around with the blending options you can follow along or you can create your own once again now here what you're gonna want to do is press rasterize type and rasterize layer style um I, you don't really have to do it but it's something i do so for me just do it bro so you're gonna press it and then you're gonna press command j this is gonna make a copy you're gonna use your arrow keys to give it that little 3d effect and you're just gonna place it where you want it Now from here on, this isn't necessary really, but this is me adding key details to make it stand out. If you really want to know how to make it stand out, make sure you watch that end though. I'm going to show you a trick that nobody knows. Alright, so here we got the thumbnail. It's basically over. We're gonna export it, and then this is the trick I was telling you about. So, what you're going to do is download the Lightroom app on your phone, and you're gonna DM me on Instagram, right? And you're gonna ask for the Lightroom preset. I'm gonna show you why. Alright, man, so here we are on my iPhone. You see the quality, you see the thumbnail. It looks 10 out of 10 already, but watch this. So, first, you're gonna wanna go here. You're gonna wanna go to open with Lightroom. Feel me? If you don't have Lightroom, download Lightroom. That's why I told you to download it. You're gonna go over here. You see this thumbnail? It's gonna look just like this. Watch this. So when you open it, it'll just open to your image, but mine did that. So boom, we're gonna go here. This is why you asked me for the preset. You asked me for the preset so you can get a thumbnail like this. I'm just playing around with the settings here because I know how I want mine to look, but the preset that I have on my thumbnails basically gives it a better effect, makes it stand out from everybody else's. And if you want your thumbnails the same way, man, just DM me on Instagram. My Instagram is in the description. And that is the video. So make sure you like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell if you like this video and it helped you. And if this gets a thousand likes, I will be doing a video on how I edit my videos. So feel me, stay tuned for that. That's video.